when the power goes out, the world goes to shit. Um, why does everybody get so angry with each other? <laughs> good, that's a good question. It's a great question. I think people are struggling to survive. You've got to be in a world where there's no food, and if you have nothing to barter with and no one will barter with you, then you're hungry. So you're a bit cranky right there. You can't get from Chicago to California where your son or your daughter is because there's no transportation. That takes you about a year. To get from Philadelphia uh, to Texas would take almost a year as well. So people are a bit cranky. I'm tired, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there would be food for quite a while. Well, for a little while to begin with, but our story picks up 15 years yes. after a little while. So that's a little bit longer than, yeah, the food supplies have dwindled. Uh, but, you know, I'm pretty well fed. I'm part of the Monroe <laughs> Republic, so. And it also, I mean, it looks into that issue that we've uh, so estranged from land and the ability to plow it and to, to actually feed from it. So it looks at that in, in terms of the fact that we, we no longer can survive in that environment. So the world sort of implodes. We wouldn't you think people would get together and say, Let, look, we screwed it up for so long, let's get together and try and fix it. Why aren't they saying that now? <laughs> well, that's... <a laughs> the rebels are it's saying a, it in our story. Yeah. The rebels are trying to think of a new way to operate and do it because they don't like the idea of an alternative uh, militia uh, dictatorship taking over because they don't trust. If people only trusted us, it would be Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who can trust Wouldn't you trust us? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Come on. Of course, you're already acting, aren't you? That's right, that's right. <laughs> well, think about all the people who aren't a part of any militia or the Georgia Republic who are out to get in your pocket, take your head, take your scalp. I mean, all the people in the world of anarchy who are not banded together, but who are actually lone agents. So then you might be coming to us and wanting some help. Mm -hmm. Maybe. We're really trying to sell our side of the story as you can, as you can appreciate. It's the only story we got, baby. <laughs> exactly, yeah. If you want the right answers, speak to the good guys. <laughs> and they're a little bit... They're well, dicey they're too. Right. <laughs> great, yeah. Hey, look, you know, we all work for the company, yeah. but we all love what we do. <laughs> and in this case, the company's revolution is a pretty good one. Yeah. The one thing that's always puzzled me with um, post-apocalyptic films is, why doesn't anybody use bicycles? Well, I, I thought of that because I'm a big bicycle guy. It's a wonderful question. And I think about that frequently and often because I ride a bike almost every weekend, about 50, 60 miles. So your road bike has very thin tires, wouldn't last very long. Think of the tarmac, the, the surface that you want to ride on. That's all bubbled and crumbled and you get a flat and that's it. You've got no way to fix the flat. The bike is out. Right? Yeah, but mountain bikes and... Well, 15 I mean, ten years of uh, wear and tear, though. I, mean, I, I love the way you think, though. He's thinking it makes sense. Yeah. Right? So I can't answer that. Yeah, you, you need <laughs> a bicycle guy. Yeah. yeah, 15 years later, we could have a bicycle guy. So you know, I'll talk to Kripke. We'll get a bicycle <laughs> guy. We'll figure that out. Oh, the, other, the clothes always look really clean and fresh and new as well. Whoa, I think Lord! It's because we, you know, we've got impeccable taste and tailoring uh, <laughs> as part of the Monroe Militia, and I'm, I guarantee that it's part of the um, part of being being a member. Yeah, don't Most forget, it's a civilized world. And there's a non-civilized world. And if you're in Philly, you're hooked up, you know. Yeah. Stanley Steamer, baby. Yeah, I just always like to question these things with post-apocalyptic. I love that you're asking these you've questions. Got to, you've got to question it makes for a very interesting interview. The, the other thing that always puzzled me is, I mean, the electricity goes out and everything's run down. But it's occurred to me that in the future, because everything now is digital, everything's online, if we ran out of power or anything, this would become a dark ages compared to... Absolutely, we, we return to sort of the Iron Age and, and, and whatnot. It's sort of, uh, it becomes all about uh, one's own ability to survive without all this technology. It means that we're using our hands again, we're using swords again, we're using, you know, instruments to plough the earth and everything. Everything changes. And we're not just that. I mean, there wouldn't be any cultural heritage left because if everything's on hard drives and in the you're cloud, right. I mean, we probably would lose the last twenty years of history because a lot of it is preserved in a database. Somewhere. That's possible, yeah. but you know, there are still in our world today of our digital madness and our wonderful connection to all things electronic that advise us, guide us, GPS us, tell us what to say and do, uh, there are still storytellers. And I would, I would venture to say that maybe in season two we'd see some of those storytellers. Stories do get passed on by those who survive, live. They tell their story with that explicit you know, uh, intention to, to pass on you know, part of what the history is and was. Mm -hmm. Provided you guys haven't killed everybody off. Yeah, I tend to shoot storytellers, but um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a couple left, aren't there? I'm not sure. And where do you think the story's going to go from, from here? Downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with these questions you're asking. <laughs> now, after episode 20, I mean, Eric, uh, have you seen up to episode 20? I'm not that All right, one, yeah. so, so episode 20, the world is, 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 is so massive. The power shifts 
uh, between the characters and um, we can go anywhere and everywhere and um, they're cooking it up in the writers room right now but um, we'll be exploring the rest of what was formerly the United States of America so Texas, Plains Nation, California um, and the people that are in control there and the people that are out of control there so it's going to be interesting. And what about the rest of the world, like Australia or, and Britain? We get a glimpse in, in episode 20 of what's been going on there. Um, and, you know, we, we see, I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a spoiler, it probably is, but we do see the president of the former United States of America parked offshore in, uh, in Cuba, in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, so we're, we're really starting to bleed out from the American continent. There may be a re-entry of uh, the political world that you haven't seen that left the United States when the power went out. Uh, I've always thought, and the joke has been in the first season between me and Jeff, the, uh, our wonderful stunt coordinator, that, you know, hey, listen, why not take it to the world? Let's go, you know, Revolution Czech Republic, Revolution London, <laughs> Revolution the Isle of Man. Uh, but, you know, I think what is really interesting about the show and through circumstance, uh, we have moved from North Carolina to uh, Austin, Texas. I love that because now you get a chance to see uh, the geography play a, a very particular position in our show. It always has. We always have the mm -hmm. map, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the conquering Monroe Republic moving across that map. But now we're able to realize in, the, in our first season and going into our second, a new geographical place to see and feel. So every season, to me, should be in a different place. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Thank <laughs> you so much. Revolution. All right. Yeah. Thank you, brother. <laughs>